Today, television company Western Armenia represents the most important news for today. Good day. Today's broadcast. There are two Armenian states, Guillermo Garamanian. The prosecutor's office appealed the acquittal of lawyers who used the phrase genocide against Armenians. Geopolitical developments in Eastern Armenia and Artsakh. Armenian identity. Islamized Armenians. The deputies called on the AU leaders to support the preservation of Artsakh Armenian heritage. Archaeologists in Western Armenia found an inscription belonging to the Armenian Yervan Duni Palace. Guillermo Karamanyan, ambassador of the Republic of Western Armenia to the Republic of Argentina, writes, No matter how many rights there are, if we don't organize and use them, we will die without restoring our lands. This is the aim of the global establishment against us, to make us forget our right to stop being Armenians and be satisfied with citizenship which each of us has towards the land where we were born, which we recognize as the only Armenian state exists. It is the Republic of Armenia of 1991, when in reality there is also the Armenian state of 1920, which today is called the Republic of Western Armenia, although it is completely temporarily appropriated by Turkey and Baku. Since 1991, when world ge geopolitical forces and the leaders of Soviet Armenia created the Armenian state of 1920 with an area of 29,800 kilometers. New Armenian state and called in it the Republic of Armenia to confuse more not understanding that this new country is completely different from the state that the geopolitical power under the patronage of Boris Nobar was created together with the Armenian patriots in 1920. An internal process of degradation of the Armenian nation began with large does of the patriotism which could culminate in an imminent attack on Yerevan by our enemies and the eventual usurpation of the two Armenian states recognized by the world under public international law in 1920 and 1991. With the official position implemented since 1991 by the tandem leadership of the Republic of Armenia, global geopolitical power, we have been kept in a state of confusion and deliberate misinformation for over 40 years. This absurd and clumsy situation led to the fact that we lost Artsakh. In every city in the world where the diaspora lives, represented as part of traditional Armenian political parties and the Armenian establishment and the lamentable lack of a response or complicity of community forces. History will judge when the time comes have been manifested since 1991 in perfect harmony with the official position of the leadership of the Republic of Armenia, global geopolitical power tandem. More than 40 years we have been kept in a state of confusion and deliberate mis misinformation. This absurd and clumsy situation brought us to lose Artsakh, the most unbearable pain that we know today. The General Prosecutor's Office of Tigrana Gert has appealed against the acquittal of former heads of the Cham Chamber of Advocates in Tigrana Gert in case of the genocide committed against Armenians. In its motion of objection, the prosecutor's office claimed that the expression used by the Chamber of Advocates contained a crime. An objection was filed against the acquittal decision regarding the statements made on April 4, 2020 on the commemoration day of the genocide committed against Armenians. At the request of Batman's Attorney General's Office, as a result of hearings authorized by the Department of Justice, the Ninth Criminal Court of Tigranagar decided publicly to the Turkish nation in insulting the Turkish government, parliament, government, and the judicial bodies to accept the criminal indictment and convict the members of Governing Council of the Chamber of Advocates. The case, which was initiated against 11 persons individually demanding six months and three years imprisonment despite the request of the prosecution ended with acquittal. According to the Courage declares that freedom of speech in the judgment, the court evaluated the justification of the acquittal decision and noted that the statements in question are within the limits of criticism, taking into account Article 26 of the Turkish Civil Code, which regulates freedom of thought and speech, Articles 25 and 26 of the Constitution and the European Convention of Human Rights, Article 10 of the Convention. In its recent decision, the court pointed out the criminal concepts of deportation, major disaster, forced displacement, genocide, and evaluated them as expression of thought within the framework of freedom of speech. According to court decision, therefore, the material elements of the crime are absent. The prosecutor appealed. After the publication of the court decision, the Tigran Argyr General Prosecutor's Office appealed it to the Tigran Argyr District Court of Justice and ob objected to the verdict. In its objection, the prosecutor's office included the concept of deportation, major disaster, forced displacement, genocide used in the text of the statement of the 
Diyar Bekir Bar Association has published it, humiliating the Turkish nation, the Turkish government, its parliament and government judicial bodies, claiming that the members of the Council of the Association committed the crime of publicity, insulting the Turkish nation state parliament, government and judicial bodies regulated by Article 301 of the Turkish Criminal Code with the statement in question the prosecutor's office insisted that the acquittal of the suspects, although they should to, to be punished, it contradicts the procedure and the law. In its objection, the prosecutor's office meditated an annual Tigranegar's acquittal decision of the Ninth Criminal Court due to formal and substantial violations of the law. Geopolitical developments in South Caucasus will be held in the Belgian Senate on March 25. A roundtable discussion entitled Armenian and Artsakh, the aim of which is to analyze the geopolitical developments in the South Caucasus since September 22, in this context, the Artsakh conflict and the challenges facing Armenia. The main speakers of the roundtable will be Els van Roof, chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee of the Belgian Federal Parliament, Paul Mertz, analyst of international negotiations, co-founder of the Clean Gangdal Institute, writer diplomat Olivia Weber. The speakers will shed light on the developments in the region from the perspective of international human rights, analyze the reaction of the international community, particularly the role of the European Union. The participants of the discussion will also talk about future prospects ways out of the current situation and the necessary clear steps that should be taken to protect the inalienable rights of Artsakh and Armenians of Artsakh. Political like the posture of Hamshan people, an important variable in the perception of the Hamshan people and the Armenian Hamshan identity is the political attitude. From the discussion on the Hattic Facebook page, it is clear that the people of Hamshan with the liberation socialist or liberal position accept that the Hamshan identity is related to the Armenian identity by the Hamshan people with the right wing conservative nation nationalist position are more in line with the Turkish identity and are against the Armenian identity. To have anything to do with identity. The situation is supported by the fact that people with the political stance against the rule of law are weakening their ties to the official ideology and liberal political groups are pursuing policies that support the legal claims of identity groups. Such a development can be said to be transitory even in the case of Armenians' perceptions of their political attitude and Hamshan identity. The recent works of intellectuals from Hamshan speaking and non speaking Hamshan people are evidence to that. The recent works of intellectuals from Hamshan speaking and non speaking Hamshan people too are evidence to that. The following case is one of the obvious examples of this situation. During the trial, a journalist who did not speak Hamshan wanted to give his defense speech in his native language, but after speaking two words in Hamshan, he stated that as a result of the assimilation policy, he could not uh, continue his defense speech in Hamshan. Over time, the Varto tribe adopted the Kurdish way to life, wore Kurdish costumes, spoke Kurdish, but with all this, they strictly maintained the close nature of tribal life, in particular internal marriages, which made it possible to at least not assimilate ethnically with the Kurds. It is interesting that Kurdish-speaking Armenians, according to various sources, were extremely religious and tried to preserve and continue Christian customs in every possible way. Although the Armenians of the Kurdish-speaking Varto Ashiret remembered only a few words in their mother tongue and even prayed in Kurdish, they invited Assyrian Nestorian and Chaldean priests from neighboring villages during marriages who performed the Christian ceremony of the crown. Kurdish-speaking Armenians, having lived for decades in the mountains and in human conditions and then in the Kurdish environment, have preserved their ethnic self-awareness and clearly aware of the difference from the surrounding Kurds. Decades later, the fact of the existence of the Farto tribe became known also in the Armenian community of Istanbul, and the priest Rand Guzelian visited the tribe leader Siamet Yerbasan. After a long break, this was the first meeting of the surviving Armenians with an Armenian clergyman. Due to his visit, the Armenian tribe learned that the occupied Western Armenia, besides them, there are still Christian Armenians. The Council of Europe deputies called on a European Union leaders to support two installation cameras and Armenian heritage objects of Artsakh in order to prevent their destruction. A group of European Parliament members called on European Union leaders to ensure that the European Union take active steps to protect the Armenian culture and religious heritage in Artsakh. Member of the European Parliament, Miriam Lexman, wrote about this in official page of X attaching the content of the lengthy letter addressed to the President of the European Council, Charles Michel, the President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, and the President of the European 
Parliament Robert Metzola. We, the undersigned members of the European Parliament, are concerned that the thousand-year-old Armenian culture and religious heritage in Artsakh is under immediate threat of destruction. The desecration and usurpation in gross violation of international law and the legally binding decision of the UN International Court of Justice. These objects are an important part of our European heritage and it is our duty to ensure their preservation. After the War of Tantani, the territories that came under the control of Baku, symbolic objects of Armenian cultural and religious heritage, including churches, monuments, hajkars, cemeteries, statues and were destroyed, and Armenian inscriptions were erased from the walls of Armenian churches and tombstones. The letter states, 2,100-year-old inscription was found in Western Armenia, King Antioch of Komen urged people to obey and respect the law. Archaeonials reported. The inscriptions were found by the residents of the Turkish village. They formed a museum about it, and scientists from Oxford and Pisa University came to study them. Due to the difficult terrain and steep rocks, the samples were transported by air to the city of Pierre with the help of a military helicopter and ro ropes. In the records are the exhortations of King Antiochus I. He called on the people to obey and respect the law. On the opposite side is the relief with the image of Antioch I and Mirtet I. Antioch the first was the king of Komagen. He was the Armenian king of Yervanduni. Scientists believe that the inscription they discovered will shed light on the history of humanity and Komagen. This was all for today. Goodbye.